Um, I'm a heavily involved in the homebrew area, and the last few years I have brought a series of games called the Dumpster Games, which I make out of mostly recycled materials. And one of those games was a virtual pinball machine that was made out of, like I said, garbage, monitors that were being thrown away, computers that were needed to be recycled. So in discovering that, I have become a very big fan of what is either called virtual pinball or digital pinball. Now, let's get some housekeeping stuff out of the way at the beginning of, of this because there is a stigma with some of the traditional pinball fans that virtual pinball isn't real pinball. And it is, but it's a different form of pinball. Um, especially when you get it into a cabinet space or something like that. Works really, really well and it's a great way and a great affordable way to get into this hobby and if you have not had an opportunity to check out the booth with At Games, they are showing off their new Legends uh, 4K machine, which is really snappy and nice. And one of the things that is very uh, useful, I guess, with, uh, not useful, uh, unique with digital pinball is since it isn't this focused on what we have done over and over and over again kind of industry, they can take some chances. And one of the chances that the fine folks at Zen Studios did is hiring my guest at this time, Anna Linguri, um, to be the first female pinball designer of a commercially produced pinball machine in any form. Now, I know in many ways some might look at it and go, wow, why, why wasn't this done 20 years ago? And there's, there's been many of the women that have been involved with pinball. Sophia Ryan works for American, she was at Williams, but no one has taken a chance until now, and that is why my guest is here. So, how are we doing, and how do you feel now that you are part of the Walter Day trading card uh, legacy? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm like, Oh my God, am I famous? I didn't know about that before. Yes, yes, no, that was, that was I'll, I'll be totally honest with everybody. Rob did not tell me that he was doing that. So I had, I had no clue and I thank you so much, Walter, and I thank the Burks for doing that because that Absolutely. is a lovely honor for yeah. you because you are very significant <laughs> as far as this because pinball has been a boys club, especially in the design yeah. and that type of thing. So. Let's start off with your background. Now, the Zen Studios is located in Budapest, Hungary. Yeah. And so, what brought you into game design in general? Okay. Um, so, when I finished high school, I, uh, I knew that I want to, want to do some IT stuff. Uh, so, I was looking for like uh, courses, okay, what kind of computer stuff uh, is on. And programming was was a little uh, was way too tough or, or dry for me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, I don't really want to do that. Uh, and I wanted to learn in in the UK uh, because they have a very good universities and stuff. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, they're so good that we've had American presidents that have gone <laughs> over there and studied in the UK. So that that just gives you an idea. Yeah. And uh, and randomly, I found this course, computer game design, uh, in Scotland, Glasgow, and I was like, oh my god, that's that's just totally me. Mm -hmm. uh, and they offered three courses: computer uh, programming, computer game design, and computer uh, game uh, graphic design, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, design. I, I read the course description, and was like, yeah, that's totally me. Let's go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I graduated uh, from computer game design. Um, but I didn't really like uh, uh, Scotland, living in Scotland. Sure, sure, it's very Miss rainy. my friends, and yeah, yeah. And, they uh, wear, and they, the men walk around wearing kilts. It's, very <laughs> it's weird, yeah. It's very... Uh, so yeah, then I, I moved back to, to Budapest, to home, uh, and we have actually quite a few uh, computer game design uh, mm -hmm. companies there, computer game uh, companies there, and Zen uh, was one of the, the biggest ones. Uh, so yeah, I was just like, yeah, let's let's go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really cool. Uh, okay, they are doing pinball. Uh, okay, that's a little bit weird. Uh, I didn't expect uh, beforehand. Yes, because if you're outside of this world, you would think that it's kind of like m putting peanut butter and uh, avocados together. <laughs> you wouldn't think that it would be something like video pinball. I yeah. don't I don't quite know. So. Yeah, yeah. 
Did you have a background in pinball before you joined Zen? Not really. Like, uh, I, I always knew what it is. I played a lot of time. Uh, we have a big uh, pinball museum in Budapest. Yes, yeah, so I, I went tremendous there. Tremendous one, I've understood. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. It's, it's very huge. Mm -hmm. uh, I went there a couple of times uh, just for hanging out and, and play, some, play some pinballs. Uh, but yeah, first time uh, when I assigned to, to, to the job, uh, I didn't start with the pinball because Zen offers uh, other RPG projects. Yes, they do, projects. They do various yeah. other pros pros pro yeah. pro uh, the projects like Castle Storm, which is a uh, yeah. tower defense game, and those type of things yeah. as well. And yeah, you're yeah. also a part of a much bigger gaming conglomerate too, correct? Yeah, we are trying to, to be everywhere, not mm -hmm. just focusing on pinball. Of course, that's that's the biggest part of the Yes, because it is, it is very uh, it, it labor intensive to make a AAA game, yeah, like yeah. a Cyberpunk definitely, or, definitely. A, or a Call of Duty or, or whatever, those type of things. Yeah. And you guys are still a relatively small mom and pop uh, shop. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, there are more in the type of games what we what we make. Yes. Uh, some mini golf, some tower defense, Castle Storm, uh, Operencia, some RPGs, uh, mm -hmm. so on. Uh, so yeah, actually, I started to work on Casa Sum Two. Okay. And then uh, the head of studio uh, just came to, over to me like, Anna, we need you in Pimo. I was like, really? I was like, yeah, yeah, really do. I was like, really, really? And and he was like begging to me, okay, please, please come. And I was like, okay, if you teach me the whole industry, mm -hmm. if you teach me well, then okay, I'm in. Yes. Uh, so I had a really good mentor, uh, Deep. Uh, he's he's at Zen uh, 30, uh, 13 years now. Oh wow! Okay. He done like thirty uh, pinball uh, tables mm -hmm. already. Uh, so he was my mentor. He taught me well. And 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 just real quick for those in the audience who are not totally familiar with the pinball effects product, they started doing this about two thousand eight. Am I correct on that, Akos? And they have produced this software for. PC, Xbox, PlayStation, up to five, Nintendo Switch, even cellular phones, they've had versions of it. And, uh, yeah, VR. and VR, VR. And VR and just a bunch of other emerging industries where it has kind of, it, it, there are people in the pinball hobby who look at virtual pin as a way of kind of spearheading the very thing that we are at right now. Yeah. Because when your product came out and the competing product came out, people who had kind of forgotten that, oh, the Adams Family was really fun when I was in high school, were going, hey, I haven't played the Adams Family in 15 years. Yeah. I'm going to play it on my phone, or I'm going to play it on that. And it's, and it's helped spearhead the emergence Absolutely. of this. So you're, you're brought into pinball. You don't have much of a background. What did they start you on as uh, far as, I mean, they didn't immediately go, Anna, you're a lead designer. They no, no, they, no, they no. probably um, had you. Okay, so the first few months, uh, I did a lot of research. Uh, I had to play a lot of people. Uh, actually, has to memorize some rules. Okay, uh, let's focus on Twilight Zone. Okay, you have three days to memorize all the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's gonna be a, a, a questioning that okay, do you really understand yes. how the rules are? Uh, and, and it's and that is something that they do at Stern Pinball as well, where they tell their designers to play a little bit of pinball every day, yeah. So that you get into the frame of if you have a shot, yeah. You this will get you this, and there yeah. will be that a will reward double to the quote score. Yeah. Brent Absolutely. Spiner from Absolutely. Star Trek: The Next Generation. And then uh, got my first theme, uh, mm -hmm. Trolls. Trolls Pinball, yeah. Based on. Based on the Universal DreamWorks DreamWorks, movie. absolutely. License, license. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was one of our first uh, table, uh, which went for an Apple Arcade uh, project. OK. Uh, and it was a new idea that we want to share the pinball more. Mm -hmm. uh, and you guys are on a lot of platforms. You've yeah, been yeah, yeah, on yeah. Um, not only the ones that I mentioned before, but I noticed the other night that you're on Luna. Um, there are plenty of places where people can absolutely, sample this. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Apple Arcade, one of, uh, it was a huge and, and, and a very successful project because, uh, so uh, Apple Arcade offers uh, subscription and then you have plenty of uh, free games you can, you mm -hmm. can play. So there's no, there's no real investment, whereas like if you're checking out a pinball, like a, a typical pinball that's being sold here. Oh yeah, you know, no, you're no, absolutely not. Thousands of dollars, where yeah. Zen is, you know, you could probably get the entire collection for a few hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or or pay for the subscription or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
and uh, and of course Apple Arcade is very family friendly. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know uh, the daddies uh, can play in their phone sure. uh, in in Apple Arcade, and even their kids can play uh, in the metro or I don't know where where in the restaurant when when the adults are speaking. Okay, mm -hmm. just have fun with my phone. Here is here are some pinball. Uh, so we wanted to offer uh, to the kids as well some 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 pinball tables because the other themes are not really kid friendly usually. Yeah, no, you're not going to Duke Nukem does not work with yeah, the yeah, small children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. And also, uh, we wanted to to create a very easy pinball who who even the kids can enjoy and mm -hmm. and shouldn't have to shoot ten lays before yeah. some things happen. And it's one of the things that I found very lovely about the game was the fact that the little girl troll constantly is asking the user to have a, I, she wanted a hug, she yeah. wanted a hug. Yeah. And then the kid knows what they're going to shoot for yeah. and what they're going to go from there. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're brought the project. Now, y Zen went through a major revision of their software platform over the last two years. They've yeah. gone from having a proprietary engine, which for those who don't know what a game engine is, a game engine is essentially the operating system that the game runs on. So it handles all of the things like the 3D textures and and the underlying stuff, and then it makes it easier for them. And beforehand, one of the things that you guys were dealing with was they had to have in-house people updating all of these operating system things. And think of when you have an update on your, uh, your uh, Windows computer or your phone or whatever. It's just keeping those underlying things, whereas um, Unreal, which is a engine that is used for a bunch of things from video games to the latest Star Wars Disney Plus series that you've been watching um, throughout the last few years. Uh, and it's a very powerful piece of things. So then Epic takes care of the back end of the operating system, and then you guys can more focus on, yeah, on the quality. Yeah, uh, they games. offer a lot of good tools, uh, a very strong engine, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful engine. Yes, very much so. Uh, uh, we had our own. Uh, own engine before, mm -hmm. uh, but it had some limitations, yeah. and and it's not as beautiful as an Unreal can make. No, uh, so we we had to b make a big decision so to to transfer to Unreal, but it was very tough to to transfer to trans transfer the old tables. Yes, because it's uh, not as Unreal. simple as like yeah. going from Windows 10 to Windows 11, yeah, yeah, and I can just bring my data over. You have to go in and make new 3D models yeah. and 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 tell that engine it's a pinball, not Batman flying yeah, down yeah. from Yeah, the mechanics are, mm -hmm. are the, the most challenging part, usually mm -hmm. the animations and the mechanics, yeah. Ob obviously the, the 3D models, we can just almost drag and drop them, uh, but but a lot of lightning and, and, and mechanics are, are okay. very, very different. So let's talk about the basic design process, because okay. in typical fashion with um, traditional pinball, they will start in CAD. Some start in a open source uh, product called VPX, and they will use VPX as a way of getting you know, some shots together and then being able to load it up on a virtual table and start testing it before they put a whitewood together. Yeah. What is the whitewood stage then in a digital concept? Do you start in a CAD software or do you start in um, immediately in Unreal? Okay, uh, yeah, first of all, when we got the theme, we are doing some research, and then uh, we, we are always uh, getting inspired of existing tables, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and, and then we're gonna start to draw uh, in a plane, uh, sometimes in a paper, but usually uh, then uh, in a very, very basic, uh, just drawing software, like a little bit, can, yeah, it, it can be a little bit uh, more than than paint, but but mm -hmm. nothing nothing huge. Nothing no, special. but just basically your wire mesh, where in traditional animation they would call yeah. that a pencil sketch, yeah, and yeah, yeah. they Absolutely. go through and and you see a basic outline, but it's yeah. not you know bell singing about no, whatever. No, no. Okay, uh, we are lucky because we have a lot of uh, senior uh, pinball graphic designers and designers, mm -hmm. uh, so even. On the paper with a hand sketch, uh, they can see how they how it, is it gonna work or not? Mm -hmm. Is the orbit uh, gonna have a good shape? Are the loops offer uh, a good nice layout? Mm -hmm. uh, so we are really lucky because we, every time we make a layout, uh, we gather together, uh, analyze it, see if how 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 can we how can we make it? Uh, 
uh, how can we improve? Um, yeah, and then uh, we give this uh, paper layout or, or just a sketch layout uh, to the graphic designer mm -hmm. uh, who is putting into the 3D world. Okay. Uh, it called white boxing when when they are just uh, so similar to the white wood, but you just yeah, call it a white yeah, box. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then and it, and it could just be a different phrase for a different part of the world too. Yeah, we absolutely. Do you have to remember too that we we do use phrases in America that don't get used other places? <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, and then we have a visual of of the actual uh, pinball. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the next phase is, uh, is the concept and, and prototyping, let's say. Um, when the 2D art is gonna sketch up with some contest of the, of the whole table, uh, mm -hmm. according to the 3D render. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, the 3D art is gonna put it in Unreal. Okay. Uh, so we can have the first uh, playable version where we have a now, just when going you, around. When you were doing those early play tests, are you starting it in, do you guys assume that the majority of people are playing this on a s screen with a, with a controller or are you looking at the cabinet mode or is that something that come it later is in the process? Okay, uh, we usually work in, in PCs, so we, mm -hmm. don't, we don't really try it in cabinet. No, and they, and they often don't. I know like when, yeah. even when you will announce a new console at a, at a show like the Tokyo Gaming Show, Oftentimes, uh, let's just pick on Nintendo. Nintendo will say we're revealing the product and they just have dummy boxes sitting there and in the back it's actually stacks of computers running a version of Linux yeah. that will actually be playing it for them. Yeah. So. Uh, we always make sure when we, um, I don't know, if we knew forward that, uh, okay, it's gonna be on cabinets and, and mobile mm -hmm. uh, and on those platform we use a top-down uh, view, camera sure. view. Uh, so we are always making sure that, okay, in every camera you view, we have uh, everything you can see, all the lamps are showing, uh, everything is like well, well seen. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Yeah, so then we go from, from the design phase into working out the, the actual game itself. So yeah. we, we, have, we have a very similar process to what you'd have in traditional pinball. Some, somebody comes up with rules then and you've got your, you know, what toys you're using and if any of you have never seen a pinball effects table, their toys are spectacular. Um, you will hit a target and then uh, whatever points you are getting in that particular session will go onto the screen. The characters can run around in various things. My favorite personally is the Deadpool pin <laughs> that they have where Deadpool will intentionally go running around and yell at things like there's a pin, How, why did they put a pinball machine on a pinball machine? You know, and, and those type of things. So you're able to have some creative liberties that a George Gomez would not have yeah, that, on a traditional machine. Yeah, that's the machine. positive side of, of virtual pinball, that we can literally do anything uh, mm -hmm. which, which can Which uh, makes have. it even funnier that you, up until recently, were using the dot matrix. You've got the spectacular graphics Oh yeah, that, that's, and that's then, a but new no, feature our, as well. Our, our scoreboard is still the old one from the old state. Don't <laughs> yeah. worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so the next phase is, uh, it's called alpha phase. Um, the graphic designer is gonna start uh, modeling up, uh, mm -hmm. modeling, um, and the designer gonna start uh, put together the rule set. Okay. And uh, we are the ones actually who are putting together in the virtual world as well, uh, with digital coding it's called, uh, virtual coding, sorry. Uh, virtual coding is, is uh, it's a good tool uh, for not programmers. Uh, it's basically a programming, but we have uh, boxes and rules and mathematics uh, sections, and we actually just have to draw the lines and, and, the, and the, the strategic uh, behind those that. So I don't know uh, if I'm gonna go with the skill shot, then sure. okay, if we hit ramp uh, and I'm gonna draw four lines, get a score, uh, display says uh, skill shot, uh, I'm gonna go with a, with a lamp effect. Uh, so it's quite easy and this, this, uh, this virtual coding uh, software uh, is actually our own made. Okay, uh, so we which can you would steal. have to be because it's not like a platformer where you have 
specific things that are similar, whether it's Mario or Sonic. Yeah, it's very specific. Uh, but even though Unreal offers, uh, it's called Blueprint, Blueprint mm -hmm. and it's the same kind of system. Sure, sure. But we have very specific pinball-based uh, boxes and, and stuff, yeah. Which is why Unreal is just such an amazing yeah. tool yeah. Um, that I don't know why more, you know, I they and there are various other engines as well, but Unreal just blows my mind that you that something that started as a battle royale uh, shooter is now become this thing that everybody can create with. Yeah, absolutely. And it's this robust tool to, to go from yeah. there. Yeah. So then you go from the alpha stage, then I would assume the next part is beta, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, what happens in the beta phase? Okay, beta, f and, uh, at the at for the end of the beta phase, uh, we, we, our aim is to have content ready table so all of the sound effects, or all of the the virtual uh, effects, all of the music, uh, everything is in. Uh, all the models are in, well textured, uh, but not polished. So everything is in, but but not that nice, not that not that uh, finalized. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the uh, the next, and this is the phase when we get a QA a okay. tester. Yeah. So these are for those of you who don't know, in video games, they're in the beta phase, they will have outside people, I'm assuming, or are they yeah. inside people? Okay. Uh, no, uh, we have our inside people. You have your own inside people. Yeah, okay. because people is very specific. Sure, uh, so, so you'd, it's, it's not, they're not going to have the same same point of reference that they yeah. would for a first-person yeah, 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 yeah. shooter. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So then they start testing it, and then they will bring notes back to you saying, well, I tried to hit the troll, but the troll felt her head fell off, or yeah. something. Something that was unforeseen happened. Absolutely. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and yeah, and then after the beta phase, uh, we are going to RC. Okay. RC called it's a release candidate. Uh, release candidate means that okay, uh, the game is finalized. Uh, everything is well polished. All the lining are, are fixed. Mm -hmm. Uh, the ball rolls down the paths correctly instead absolutely. of getting stuck. Absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, but still might uh, might can occur some some bugs. Uh, but this is the product when we show for for the for the lot of companies we are working with uh, to okay, this is the table. And, and you guys work with an impressive amount of licenses. Yeah, so you work much. from pretty much every one of the movie studios yeah. that are out there, and it, it it is a just a robust product. And if you've Anybody in the audience has never tried it before. Go home and and download. You can download the the initial pinball effects program. They will give you previews of the game, so you can play it for like a ball or for a certain amount of time before they cut you off. And it is a very impressive product with some great tables and great rules. And and Anna's. Uh, like I said, the Trolls game was just too much fun, but you've also done another <laughs> game called The Curse of the Mummy. Yeah. Um, what other ones? Uh, I did uh, Homeworld. Okay. Uh, it's based on the Homeworld uh, video, video game. Video which video is game. another yeah. thing that you guys can do too, which is you've done tables based on arcade, or not arcade, but traditional video game IPs, yeah. which doesn't seem to be done very often in the real yeah in yeah the, the uh, yeah we are field. we are trying to to get all everybody's attention with with all these kind of themes like not just we are trying not just to focus on the movies and series mm -hmm. and, and and old school stuff we are okay then we are offering a lot of video game themed uh, actually we just announced that uh, we're gonna do uh, this year uh, tabletop uh, Games, uh, Osmodi, so you can even Osmodi have, games. Which, which, which sounds like a fun way of doing it because then you can add those rules into it. And try yeah, to absolutely. It, it was actually challenging, but it was it was very good and mm -hmm. it was very fun and it was so good to work with them with the with the actual uh, board game designers because they had such a good ideas. Uh, because okay, if you are going uh, with a with a movie theme, uh, the movie producers, and, sure. and they don't really have any new ideas, or, or yeah, they're just, they don't well, really say anything. Are you yeah. saying Hollywood has no new ideas? Of course they have, uh, but they are mostly uh, saying that, oh, the, the ear is not right. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll, foc they'll focus on the minutia that most absolutely. of the people will yeah, not yeah. Focus they're on. They're focusing more, more on the franchise, but these board games uh, companies, it was so good to see that, Oh uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. I think the strategy would be better if we, if if I don't know, the this mode could be go after that mode, and and you cannot start that mode if you don't have the oxygen level up to 100 yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah, and that's part of the fun too, is that you can yeah. add 
elements for there. I, I, I personally would think a game based on Red Dead Redemption would be, which is my favorite game ever, um, would be fun because you could go and have the entire pinball just be side missions. Yeah. So you have to go, Arthur needs to go and get photographs or, or whatever situation it would be. Here, Akos, uh, uh, sign me up. I'll, 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 I'll help you design that one. <laughs> um, but we are running low on time. So if we want anybody to get any questions in for Anna or anything, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, so the company is, is quite like, it's working on with pinball tables more than 10 years now. So we, uh, we have quite a finalized physics. We kind of have uh, very finalized uh, materials, you know. So it's quite, uh, we can quite quickly uh, just implement them uh, into every one of the tables. So we like to say that all of our table has the same physics. Uh, we are always develop them, uh, so. And you have different levels of physics, correct? So you have a that can be changed in the settings where it's like a uh, a more arcade version, classic yeah, physics, yeah, absolutely, and those type of stuff, depending on the preferences of the player. Absolutely. So we offer for for novice players, we offer a little bit easier uh, physics where the where the ball is not as quickly uh, as as the real one is but for the pro players we offer uh, a more realistic uh, more realistic physics then okay do we have any other questions in the crowd well what we would like to do is my friend akos has a few game codes so that if any of you would be interested in uh, sampling pinball effects we would like to give you the opportunity to do so and just a quick reminder as he's walking up Pinball FX is available right now on various platforms, including all of the versions of Xbox that are the modern versions. You're not going to find it on the original Xbox, unfortunately. Um, but it's available on PlayStation 4 and 5, as well as Nintendo Switch. And it is, going to, it is also available in PC on Steam and on the Epic Game Store. And coming soon from Pinball FX is a new batch of product from them called Pinball M, which is going to be a rated M version of it so that they can do more adult-orientated yeah. tables. So you can do horror movies. They've announced a, th a game played on a, bleh, a game based on child's play and the one that I get the biggest kick out of, one based on Duke Nukem 3D, the <laughs> 1997 classic video game. So, Anna, we thank you so much. Akos, thank how would you, you like to me. do this? <laughs> get a code out of the hat so uh, he's got plenty of them we're not even we're not even uh doing a contest we're just giving them away that's how we're that's how we're doing yeah. it so we thank you so very much for coming and hearing about digital pinball and thank we you. thank you anna for coming all the way she came from budapest hungary <laughs> she flew a very long way and her arms are very tired thank you for having me no problem